this episode, we are going to go over some little extras that you can add to Visual Studio Code to hopefully boost your productivity. Now, they aren't huge changes, but they add up over time. They're not just the usual save and format style things. These are little odd ones you might have seen other people have and wondered how they got them. If you found these settings helpful, or if you're new to the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribe because it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Now let's jump straight in. We are going to add all of these changes just through the settings in the JSON file. And to get to that, all you have to do is go Command Shift P and start typing, open settings, and you'll see the settings starting to be typed out here. So you wanna just click this one the open settings JSON. And when you're in here, you'll see I have lots of settings already added, but what I'm really interested in here is just adding a few more to the end. The first thing I'm going to change is taking this sidebar and moving it to the right. And the reason is it might be a small detail, but when you open and close this sidebar, your code actually goes in and you end up losing some focus on where the code was. And we all know as developers that we can very easily be distracted. So let's just add it in. And all you have to say is workbench dot sidebar. And it has the location and you'll see it here. It says left or right. So we're going to say right. And once I save that, boom. So I find it a lot less jarring now when I click this closed, because my code doesn't just jump around. The next thing I'm going to go into is disabling this little mini map here. I think it takes up a big chunk of screen real estate here. Even when I close this over, you'll see it just that long bar usually frustrates me. So let's remove it. We're going to say editor dot dot even mini map dot enabled. Did I spell editor wrong? Probably dot enabled and that is going to be false if I could type right. And as you can see, the mini map is now gone. The next thing I like to disable again, and I think you're starting to see a pattern here is just removing things to leave less distractions is I like to remove this open editors section here because I always end up in the wrong section. So right in here, it's all the files I've clicked that are opened. And I usually end up just getting lost in here because I end up looking for things in the file directory. So it's just easier to me. And I feel a little less stupid when I'm not looking for a file that doesn't exist in the open explorer for too long. So let's again, get rid of this. And it's going to be explorer dot uh, open editors visible, and we can say how many open editors we want, but I'm going to say zero. And now you'll see that there on the right, my open editors just disappears. Now, the last one is slightly more different. This is going to be about getting font ligatures. And what that means is if you've ever seen something like um, a function or const something, this is some really good naming here. And you've probably seen some fonts where these two symbols or certain symbols like equal, equal, equals stick together. So I'm just going to set this up so we can see the change. So if two equals two, then do something. And if two is not equal to two, then do something else. Now, this is just to show you how this font works in a second. This is definitely just a, a small thing. and I'll explain why it helps in a second. So if we jump back into our settings.json, what we're going to do here is add a new line and we'll have to add two settings here. One to add a font which has ligatures. So the most common one I've seen for this is fire a code. So I'm going to use fire code because I have it installed and I'll show you in a second where I got that. So right over here, we'll say editor.fontfamily fire code. And then 
we will say editor dot font ligatures and we will say true now. Okay, let's jump back over into our blog and you'll see the change here. And you'll see now that these become a single symbol. Now, why this helps you as a developer is we have to mentally parse the three symbols or two symbols sitting together to mean something else. So by having a specific font enabled, it means we can just quickly see what this means with just one, I suppose, look at something rather than having to do a small bit of addition. So again, these changes just add milliseconds to our workflow, but I think they're very helpful. Now, if you want to get fire a code, you just go to this repo here. I'll zoom in just in case you can't see it. And the fire a code repo here, you can download it. And when you download it, you'll get the bundle here. You just have to go into the dist folder here and you will go to the .tff if you're on Mac anyway. So you can just drag over all of them, double click inside under window, you'll just click install fonts. So, so after it's installed, you will be able to see things like this. Now, if you are not interested in using Fire Code and you want to try something different, if you're a little bit more hipster or whatever else, the link to this page showing you lots of other fonts you can try out that will also give you ligatures are in the description below. So this is a shorter video than usual, and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please, again, like the video, it really helps me out. And until next time, happy coding. <laughs>